Warm wishes to one and all present here, respected principal, teachers and my dear friends. Hey to a wonderful day. Myself, Aaron Matthew Benny from Commerce Batch. Today, I would like to take a few minutes from your busy valid day for just sharing a few points on my project. My, point, my project is a simple and useful machine. It is none other than an ATM. Most of you would be knowing what an ATM really is. ATM stands for Asynchronous Transfer Board. Most of you would be knowing it as Automated Teller Machines. Now I would like to move on to the first part of my project. How to use an ATM. One. Rule number one. Practice basic safety procedures. This point basically means that we should be uh, aware with what is happening in our surroundings. Especially while typing our pin. If anyone in our surround, if anyone near us gets us a uh, pin, it should be uh, very helpful for him to use it for his uh, purposes later. Rule number two: Insert your debit card into the ATM. Rule number three: Select your language. And rule number four: Enter your pin when prompted. Rule number five: Withdraw your money. Rule number six: Deposit your money. Rule number se seven. Check your account balance. Rule number 8. Transfer your money and make payments. Rule number 9. Follow the prompts to end your session. Rule, rule number 10. And the most important. Don't forget to take your money and card. Now we move on to the second part. How is an ATM beneficial in business transactions? Using an ATM, customers can access to bank deposits as well as uh, credit accounts in order to make a variety of financial transactions, uh, notably uh, withdrawing of money or uh, uh, depositing of money as well as, as, well as uh, transferring of money in and from mobile phones. ATMs can also be used to transfer, uh, ATMs can also be used to uh, withdraw money in foreign countries. Now I would like to move on to the third and final part. Uses of an ATM. Most of you would be familiar with the use of an ATM, but I would like to tell some of the points. Use of an ATM. ATM can be used for recharging a mobile phone, paying of income taxes, paying of bill, depositing of money and transfer of money. So these are some of the simple and valuable points on how an ATM is beneficial in business transactions, which can lead to the development of economy financially. Hope everyone liked my session. Thank you and have a nice day. Stay blessed, stay safe. Good morning to all. Today I would like to present my new company Just Click Online Shopping. It is an online shopping company. We have many branded and other types of products. We have small scale uh, shoppers also. It sells their goods through our product. Uh, then uh, from our platform we deliver according to the order of the people. Then it would help offline retailers to get an opportunity to sell their products. Then this click introduce a COVID-19 supply store uh, for the easy access for business to purchase uh, COVID-19 supplies. We have friendline organizations such as healthcare governments can purchase COVID-19 supplies in a bulk from just click online shoppers. And we uh, we have wide variety of COVID-19 supplies like N95 masks, uh, surgical masks, sanitizer, uh, and other types of surgical items. Good evening, Miss. Today I am showing a model of chain of distribution. So, first of all, we should know what is chain of distribution. Chain of distribution is a chain of intermediaries through which a product moves in order to be made available for purchase by consumers. In simple words, we can say that it is the best path or route through which a product moves from producers to consumers. So, there are two types of distribution channels that is indirect channel and direct channel and indirect channel. Direct channel allows uh, manufacturers to sell their product directly to consumers. 
Whereas, uh, indirect channels uh, allows the product to be sold through various intermediaries, mediatories, mediaries, like wholesalers, retailers, etc. So, this is a model of uh, indirect distribution. So, this distribution includes manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, and finally, consumers. So, firstly, manufacturing centers. We all know that the function of manufacturing centers is to collect raw materials and convert it into useful products through various processes. So here I am taking cloth as a product. So uh, we all know that uh, cloth is manufactured uh, through various processes like spinning, yarning, weaving, stitching etc. So this is a model of weaving here a man is weaving and uh, this is a tailor and she is stitching clothes and finally the good product is ready and it is uh, packed as a bundle here so after finishing all manufacturing processes the manufacturers sell this to wholesalers the wholesalers buy this as a, a in bulk quantities and uh, they resell it to for resale and they sell it to retailers the wholesalers um, um, wholesalers is an intermediary, intermediary entity that buys the product and sells it to retailers rather than selling directly to consumers. The wholesalers buy the products in bulk quantities and then resell, resell it to retailers. So uh, the wholesalers, uh, are, wholesaler is an intermediary entity that buys the product and sells it to retailers rather than selling directly to consumers. So the wholesalers, uh, uh, then the wholesaler will sell this to, uh, uh, the wholesaler will break it, uh, the bulk quantities into smaller quantities and then sell it to retailers. The retailers are the end of the, uh, are at the end of the supply chain and then the retailers will sell it to consumers. So um, this is, this, these all activities include chain of distribution. So there are, uh, the basic function of chain of distribution is to uh, make uh, the product, uh, may helping manufacturers to uh, <coughs> products as a, uh, efficiently to meet customers' demands. So there are some factors. So to attain this function, uh, it would require help of some factors. Those factors are known as auxiliaries to trade. Trade means buying and selling of goods and services. That is here also involves buying and selling of goods and services. So, the, the those activities that support trade are known as auxiliaries to trade. Those activities are transportation, commu transportation and communication, banking and finance, uh, advertisement, insurance, etc. Warehousing, etc. So, transportation. Transportation helps to remove the hindrance of placed by uh, making the pro uh, helping the product to move from producing centers to markets for sale so uh, that help uh, to remove hindrance of place then uh, warehouse warehouse helps the product to be uh, made available for customers when, as and when they require so it is also a, a part of auxiliaries to trade then advertisement advertisement helps in promoting the sale and inducing the customers to buy the products. Then banking and uh, finance uh, helps in providing uh, funds to the retailers or consumers or manufacturers uh, who else need they will provide um, funds to them. Then, uh, then next we discuss about how would these manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers get profit that is if uh, suppose if we consider this bundle on the power if we consider this product uh, the total expenses that is all manufacturing expense of this bundle is rupees 8 so if the manufacturers are selling this uh, bundle for rupees 8 for this for wholesalers uh, they will not get their profit right so, in order to get profit, they will add more amount rather than they spend for manufacturing processes. So, if he, if the manufacturer sends this 
bund is uh, uh, send this bundle for rupees ten so that he would get a profit of rupees two, right? Then um, um, wholesalers buy this uh, each bun uh, wholesalers buy each bundle for rupees ten, and then uh, when they resell it to uh, retailers, they will sell it for rupees twelve so that they also get a profit of rupees two. Similarly, the retailers also sell this to consumers for rupees 40 so that they also get a profit of rupees 2 so uh, this is the way that they would get profit they would earn profit through this process so the main aim of we all know that the main aim of business activity is to earn profit here also all are earning profit right so this is a business activity so this is the concept of my model i hope you all understood this concept thank you in the ship, we are extracting the crude, crude oil by the process of drilling. The crude oil is then, then transported into this factory. This factory is also known as petroleum refineries. The, the crude oil is taken into the funnel and heated till they boil. The, the crude oil is, con, is converted many many useful products such as diesel, petrol, diesel, petrol, wax, etc. Now I am talking about petrol and diesel. From this factory, from this from this factory, the petrol from this factory, the petrol and diesel transported into into the petrol pump using this truck. Uh, from the from, from the petrol pump, we feed petrol and diesels to our vehicles. Using the petrol pump, the uh, the, the vehicles get energy to run. This this is the model of plant. When the power failure occur, the, the generator, uh, when the power failure occur, uh, they, they use generator to create electricity. The diesel is, diesel is used for this uh, generator. So in total, the, the, so in total, the petroleum products are useful in our life. So the petroleum, pump, petroleum is important for increasing the economy. The people who, the people who is working in people who is business and becoming economically high in modern products. The country in girl high economy by using the petroleum business. Thank you. Balance sheet. So, uh, and all these things that are valuable are not uh, reported on a balance sheet. Uh, and yeah, that is, it is a resource uh, which, is, which is expressed in monetary terms. Can be expressed in monetary terms. Yeah. Business transaction. So, business transaction is also called financial transaction, and uh, this is an event. Uh, which is a, this is an event uh, expressed in terms of money and uh, essential uh, impact of financial position of the business. And uh, business transaction can be recorded in. Uh, in uh, making a journal entry by a uh, uh, book is made in journal book uh, bookkeeper or an accountant so uh, only uh, only those events which are uh, which are uh, uh, which are uh, measured in the uh, measured in the mon monetary terms can be uh, included in uh, included in the accounting records of the business and uh, such terms uh, such events uh, which uh, which cannot be uh, reliably assigned for uh, reliably assigned for uh, dollar uh, dollar value, uh, and this uh, uh, that that may be related to the business, but um, the such conditions or events that uh, are not called business transaction or, or financial transaction. So the example is uh, when a CEO of a company delivers a speech or like delivers a speech or lecture to the employees. Uh, it uh, it is it is uh, benefit for the company's business, but it does not include in terms of money, or uh, it is it cannot be expressed in terms of money. It is not included in terms of money, so it is not recorded in a business transaction. The best example is this. So uh, that speech it is it is generally uh, benefit for the business company's business, but it is not uh, expressed in terms of money. So such things are not included in the business records. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Good evening. Chain of distribution.
contribution refers to a chain of intermediate use or business of through which the final produce the final purchaser purchases a good or service. We as consumers are a vital part of the chain of distribution. But in addition to us, it also includes the producer, the manufacturer, the wholesaler, and the retailer. So I have prepared a model showing the chain of distribution of tea, which is a vital part of our everyday life. So let us see how tea, which is produced in plantations, ultimately reaches us or the consumers. Like all other things, it all starts with the producer. Producers are people who make goods or produce provide services. In the production process, producers combine natural, human and capital resources. In the case of tea, it is produced in plantations. Plantations are usually located in high altitude areas. We can say that the workers in a plantation are the producers. So next we move on to the manufacturer. A manufacturer is a person or company that makes goods for sale. The manufacturer manufactures the tea leaves through various processes such as withering, rolling, fermentation, etc. A part of the manufactured tea will be exported and the rest will go to the wholesaler. A wholesaler buys or sells goods and services in large quantities directly from manufacturer for reselling. From the wholesaler, the tea reaches the retailer. Retailer is a person engaged in the sale of goods and services to the consumers. In this case, it is the supermarket. At long last, the tea reaches the consumer. A consumer is a person who purchases goods or services for social, family or household needs. In the case of tea, there are a wide variety of consumers. Good evening to all. Let me introduce myself. My name is Malavika of class 11C. Respected teachers and dear friends, today I am standing before you to present my project on bank. A bank is a financial institution licensed to receive deposits and make loans. Banking plays an important role in the financial life of a business. And the importance of banks can be seen from the fact that they are considered as to be the lifeblood of modern economy. Although no wealth is created by bank, but their essential activities facilitate the process of production, exchange and distribution of wealth. In this way, they become the effective partners in the process of economic development and growth. RBA plays an important part in the development strategy of the Government of India. RBA regulates commercial banks and non-banking finance companies working in India. It serves as the leader of the banking system and the money market. It regulates money supply and credit in the country. There are two broad categories under which banks are classified in India. Scheduled and non-scheduled banks. The scheduled banks include commercial banks and cooperative banks. The three main types of transactions include checks, withdrawals and deposits. Development of any country is dependent on the strength of formal structure of banking system in that country. Banks materialize the financial needs of the millions of people spread across ac uh, different geographies, sections and segments. Banks foster savings habit of public. It facilitates capital formation. Banks enable implementation of monetary policy. Banks facilitates and promotes international trade through imports and exports and so on. Thus, banks are reservoirs of funds and channels these funds for the development purpose of the country through diversified operations. 
they satisfy the needs of savers industry trade and commerce they simultaneously fulfill social responsibilities too thank you so keep in mind that during all these processes we receive additional services such as warehousing transport insurance etc these are also the constituents of the manufacturing process and i hope that through my model that all of you have gotten a clear view of how the chain of distribution of tea works thank you hello and good evening to you all this is my project the production possibility curve the product, before going to the explanation of this curve let us ask let us ask ourselves a simple question what is the main aim of every economy the main aim of every economy is of course to produce the maximum amount of goods with a limited amount of resources but how do we know if we are producing if we are utilizing these resources to the maximum um we can't just compare all the uh, goods and services produced in the world with the technology and resources and all right we can't just do that um what can we can do is just divide these resources these goods into various sectors and then just compare them using graphs that's exactly what a production possibility curve does as the name itself suggests it shows various possibilities of the amount of goods and services that can be produced within the given resources and technology um so the, it, there are three types of production possibility curve the first one is the straight line um when the uh, slope reaches the straight line it means that the amount uh, that the we are neither use we are neither under utilizing the resources nor are we using the resources to the maximum it also means that uh, the delta unit sacrifice is equal to the delta unit gain mm, okay so let's see what happens if we add things like technology education and resources to it what happens yes the graph features a concave slope this this stage of the graph is called attainability it means that we are using our resources and technology to the maximum so let's see what happens to the graph if we just take away some amount of technology and now uh, educating our workers as much or not giving it much resources yes the graph is starting to come to a convex slope right um so what happens if some cases like migration or natural calamities or war what happens yes the graph reaches to a convex slope which means uh we are not use this this can happen in two cases either when we are not using our resources and technology to the maximum or when such cases happen this stage is called underutility um so the graph basically shows the three uh, possibilities that can happen when we com- compare two goods and if the graph reaches a convex slope it means uh, the production is very low and if the graph reaches a complex slope like this one then it means that we are pro- we are using our maximum we are using our resources to the maximum and we have reached attainability thanks right this idea was first proposed by paul s samuelson uh and as you may assume it has got many applications in the real world
Good morning, one and all person here. Aspected principal, teachers, and my dear friends. Today, I am going to tell about real estate, which is my project. It helps and supports economic activity. It gives space to the business. For example, it produces many job opportunities like to bankers, engineers, architects, financial advisors, etc. And it is, and the advantages are it is connected to many industries like for making a building. It connects to paint industry, cement industry, iron and steel industry, wood industry, timber industry like that. And it also helps in development of the economy like hospitals, school, parks, etc. Uh, people used to curtail their expenses in real estate so that they can take them after as liquid cash in future. And it helps the growth of our economy by giving revenue, tax. And the dis disadvantages are if a big project is going on, so it can be cannot be utilized by all of all the people because of its high price and it takes a vast area of land and so it uh, so deforestation will happen there and global warming will in increase and flood drought earthquake like natural calamities will happen and uh, the agricultural land is also taken by the real estate and so Mm, people cannot uh, do the agriculture or uh, plant crops in there and these are the advan disadvantages thank you have a nice day so i'm going to tell three major asset class that rich people have so let me start by saying rich have asset and poor have only expenses and middle class have liabilities thinking that they are asset so the three things uh, which rich people have is that uh, what i have known is that rich people have created their wealth in three major uh, asset classes first one is first asset class is businesses a business that they start by themselves or a business that uh, they are a partner of okay in some in some cases someone else's business that they have invested in or it could be a business that they have found a many years ago and they have sold but most of the time they have the rich people have created their wealth through businesses and the second uh, main uh, asset class is stocks stocks okay uh, index funds mutual funds options what I have known is that rich people like stocks. They have, uh, they have a stock portfolio uh, because of equity that they could sell and get the cash anytime they want. They sell their shares to money. And the third uh, asset classes is uh, real estate. Real estate. Most of the wealthy people have cre either created their wealth through business, uh, through real estate or uh, or, or they have hold their wealth in real estate. I'm talking about rental properties. Uh, it could be house, commercial property. It could uh, apartment building. It could also be a land that they give for farmers. Um, it could be also a parking lot or a self storage unit. My name is Stoffel Babyorgis. I am here to demonstrate the model ATM. So first of all, we should know. What is an ATM? An automated teller machine is an electronic banking outlet that allows customer to complete basic transaction without the aid of any branch representative or a teller. Any customer who have a credit card or a debit card can access cash at most ATMs. So, we, first of all, we should know what is what a ATM looks like. This is the model of ATM, and here uh, this a customer who wants to. Withdraw the cash should have a credit card or debit card, and and uh, the customer have to insert the card into this part and enter their private PIN code and enter the amount they uh, they want and enter the enter button. And when they uh, do these steps, we uh, they they will receive the money through this 
slot. So this is a model of ATM. So next next topic is what are its uses? Its uses. Using an ATM, customer can access their bank deposit or credit accounts in order to make a variety of financial transactions, most notably cash withdrawals and balance checking, as well as transferring credit to and from mobile phones. And it can be also be used to withdraw cash in any foreign country. And next, what are its importance? ATMs are important to businesses because they bring us so many benefits. ATMs help retail stores, hotels and cafes and more to increase their footfall, basket spend, customer loyalty and provides more security and saves them money on banking fees. These are the importance and what are the relationship between consumer and the ATM. ATM requires consumers to use a plastic card that is either a bank, card, bank debit card or a credit card to complete a transaction and customers are authenticated by a PIN before a transaction can be made. Many cards come with a chip which transmit data from the card to the machine. These are the relationship between ATM and us. Next, how it gives strength to the economic, economic development of the country. The first point is ATMs distribute and recycle the bulk of banknotes and mo in modern economies. ATMs are a critical part or a channel in the world cash and spending cycle underpinning the consumer economy. And the ATM industry is a huge global market worth about $15 billion providing businesses and jobs worldwide for manufacturers, deployers, cash and transit operators and suppliers. And ATM provides business opportunities for independent deployers to develop the convenience ATM market. ATM are linked in an international system of interlocking network which make it possible for tourists and other overseas travelers to draw foreign currency using their domestic bank card that is debit card or a credit card. And last point is ATMs make cross border remittances possible for millions of the world's migrant workers providing a much needed source of additional income to the families back in their home countries. Personally, we have 4 lakh ATMs across the world. This shows how the world is developing to a cashless economy. Hope you understand my presentation about ATM. Thank you and have a nice day. Respected teachers and my dear friends, a very warm good morning to one and all of you. I am here to speak about the importance of automobile industry for the economy. Automobile industry is one of the great uh, great platform for the economic development of each and every major country. The automobile industry continues to grow, registering a 30% increase from the last decade. As in for India, 22 per thousand people or 2.2% people from the world population have their own cars. So out of 1.35 billion people, uh, 22 million or 2.2 crore people have their own cars. India is expected to be the third largest automotive market in the world by th uh, 2026. The role of the uh, automobile industry in the Indian GDP is phenomenal. The automobile industry is one of the fastest growing sector in, the, in India and the world. India is the fourth largest manufacturer of cars and seventh largest manufacturer of commercial vehicles in 2019. As I have said before, India is expected to reach 251 to 282 billion in 2026 by the automobile industry. The automobile industry is said to be an industrial and economic force worldwide. The automobile industry creates 60 million cars and trucks a year and is said to be uh, responsible for half the world's consumption of oil. The automobile industry, manufacturing industries drive $953 billion uh, into the economy each year worldwide. The transportation sector uh, is a, a major component for economy and a common tool used for uh, development. Transportation provides uh, an essential service in linking a company to its suppliers and customers. Uh, transportation enables communication, trade and other forms of exchange between people. It establishes civilization and uh, it plays an important role uh, in the economic growth and globalization process. Thank you for being patient and listening to my session. Stay home, stay safe and have a blessed life.
Thank you all. A very warm good morning to one and all present here, respected principal and teachers. Today, I am here to give a presentation on dairy farms. Dairy farming is a type of agro-business involved in the production of milk from domestic animals. It is one of the developing business in the world. In India, dairy farms has brought a change in the socio-economic conditions in rural areas. Irrespective of caste, creed or religion, people has climbed the rope of development. Dairy farms in India are now using the most advanced and automated technology when compared to other countries. And thus, it stands in the second largest milk producing country in the world. The initial investment in dairy farming business is low in comparison to other industry. Transportation and communication is very necessary in this business. The risk from animal death can be reduced by ensuring cows in dairy farming business. The combination of calcium and vitamin D present in milk is rare and very essential in attaining density of strength of bonds. 150 ml of cow's milk provides 23% of daily value of the phosphorus and 29% of calcium along with 16% of daily value of protein to us. Milk is an essential part of life. We cannot imagine an Indian morning without a cup of milk or tea. Healthy and quality milk is only possible when the animals are provided with quality fodder and feed, good health care and hygienic shelter. Our farm extends all these facilities to all our animals, along with veterinary doctors at the farm level. Our farm collects and processes the milk with the most modern fully automated technologies. We use milking machines to milk the animals. Once all the milk is collected, and stored in the bulk chillers, chiller, chilled milk is pumped into an insulated tanker under controlled temperature. When the tankers are filled with chilled milk, it starts its journey from the farm to the plant.